back to the studio this morning, trainer Tom Albertrani, who, uh, if you need a reminder, a couple of years ago trained an awfully nice horse called Bernardini. So, Tom, if you're there, welcome back to Mark and Mike and down the stretch. Hey, Mark. Hi, Mike. How Good you doing? Good morning, Tom. Well, Tom, uh, let's talk about uh, two turf gals here, this being the week of the good fillies and good mares. Let's start with Criticism, who last week won the Sheep's Head Bay. Tom, she was off for nearly a year until her American debut uh, in the Athenia last October. Mm -hmm. Were there any problems with acclimating to the United States or any reason for such a lengthy layoff? Well, she did have some uh, minor little hiccups along the way, and we just gave her the time, you know, all well, the time she needed. And uh, just, um, you know, when the, the right time came along, uh, she was ready to run later that fall when, when I first got her uh, earlier on in the year. So, you know, we were just real patient with her and, you know, brought her, brought her along nice and easy, and everything um, turned out very well since then. Tom, criticism is coming off a really professional victory last week in the Sheep's Head Bay at Belmont, going a mile and three-eighths. We're taking a look at it here. No trouble seeing her. She's right there in front. It's interesting that she's become a pace presence lately, maybe all the more so because in Europe there is the cover-up syndrome. Has mm -hmm. that surprised you? Well, not exactly. I mean, I, I, you know, she's a Philly. She doesn't need the lead, really. I mean, mm -hmm. in her first race here in the Athena, she she did kind of stalk the pace. And what what I like best about her, she's got a great closing kick. So no matter no matter if she if she inherits the lead or not, uh, she always finishes up strong. And uh, I I think she's got a lot more potential th throughout the year. We're going to see a lot of her, I believe. And we're looking forward to that. And here she is cruising home in the Sheepshead Bay. Tom, her races so far have been perfectly spaced one month apart in the current campaign. What might be next for criticism? Uh, we have the New York coming up in about uh, another 30 days from now. So everything is about uh, on schedule as her last few races, 30, 30 days apart. It's been, been a really good sequence. Tom, she comes from a very, very deep family. Her mother won the Orchid at a mile and a half, and her grandmother won the Canadian International at the same distance. It seems that you almost can't write races long enough for her. So uh, I'm just going to ask a little question here in this year of girls versus boys. Might you have the sword dancer in mind at a mile and a half at Saratoga? Well, uh, probably not at this okay, point. Yeah. I, I mean, it's always, it's always interesting to, to, to try it, but... Uh, um, I think we're going to be looking at something like the Beverly D maybe this oh, summer yeah. for her. So, and then we'll see uh, how things go for the fall. Well, from last weekend to this weekend, Tom, we're looking at Gossip Girl in the Sands Point, and a wonderful record coming into this race. Her debut last September was a transferred race from turf to dirt. So my first question is, I'm asking if that means you just always had turf from the get-go with her. Well, you know, just by a standpoint, watching her train, uh, she, she just looked like a typical grass horse, the way she moved along the dirt to me. And uh, that, that first time she ran, it, it, it came off the grass. And, you know, we said, well, you never know. You know, she's a dynaformer, yeah. Philly, so you never know. Sometimes they do take to the dirt. So, we, we you know, we were going in there just on speculation just to see if she would handle it or not. And, and we don't know. Maybe it was her first race. She might have been a little green, or maybe she just didn't handle the dirt that day. Uh, it'd be interesting to see her maybe try to, again another time, but uh, you know since we put her on the grass, she 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 uh, definitely turned turned around from her first start. You know made a tremendous uh, uh, performance in, in her uh, maiden win, and then uh, she just moved up the ladder pretty easily. And um, going back to the Ashland, even she handled the poly track mm. well too. So not to say one day we may not see her on the dirt one one day just to try her. You bring up an interesting point about Dinah Farmer. I mean, and for our audience, the sire of Gaza Girl. I mean, he is just all the rage right now, isn't he? <laughs> mm -hmm. Correct. Right. Gaza Girl, Tom, so far in her career has been a closer. Was that always your impression as you prepared her for the races? Uh, definitely. You know, she's she's very laid back, um, uh, which I like about her. She's she's a, a pretty quiet filly to be around and. Uh, well-natured, so yeah, she always had that um, manner of, of just kind of like stalking off the leaders and, you know, finishing uh, with a good late kick. 
Tom, uh, we're going to take a look right now. She's coming off a bang-up second in the Ashland that you mentioned at Keeneland, and we're taking a look at that right now, and she is uh, not fourth on the outside in this race. Talk about this performance, if you will. Um, well, um, I remember that day she took a little stumble at the start, so she might have lost a little position early on, but it didn't really affect her. Mm -hmm. um, when they made the turn into the stretch, she got carried a bit wide, I thought, and it's a, sh a very short stretch, too. Where they, they finished at the first finish line that day, uh, where I would, would have rather it had been the second finish line that day. But uh, <laughs> <Good point. laughs> she... She uh, definitely made a good move, and, uh, you know, she was just very unlucky uh, uh, that day, maybe not to get up, but, uh, you know, the winner ran a tremendous race herself. Uh, so, uh, but it was a great performance, you know, to see her run well on the poly. Yeah. Tom, it's interesting. Are, are you in the camp of uh, horsemen who who's kind of sees this affinity between turf and maybe most of the synthetic surfaces? Well, you know, I, I, you never know until until they try it. Um, you know, I, I don't oppose um, running a, a horse on the poly track. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some of the turf horses I noticed would take to it uh, a little kinder than than dirt. Uh, you know, with this particular filly, you know, she might like the poly, but she might like maybe she won't like the dirt. So, um, you know, I think you just got to try and ex. ex experiment every now and then just to see what they prefer. Tom, we're going to take a look right now, and uh, speaking of stretch kicks, I mentioned it earlier, we're going to take a look at the Here Comes the Bride right now, her, her first graded victory here at Gulfstream. She's last on the fence in the white cap. We're taking a look at this performance now. A comment about this race, if you will, and in particular, I'm interested in this inside move. Uh, yes, Elvis Trujillo rode her that day, and uh, boy, it, it was a mm. tight one. Uh, he got he found a way through somehow. Did a great job uh, finding a hole inside, and and just managed yeah. to get her up in the in the, in the, in the late late uh, few strides right to the wire. And she that was probably I think uh, one of her better performances that I, that I have seen uh, this year so far. Yeah, we're seeing her cross the line right now. Tom, this afternoon at Belmont in the Sands Point, uh, we spoke with Karen earlier. I, I assume it's it's a soft turf course. We had a bit of rain here. Uh, it stopped yesterday afternoon. Um, it's sunny, a little breezy here today. I would, my guess, it's going to be probably um, on on the good side. Does that matter to you and her? I don't think it's going to make uh, any difference to her whatsoever. I think she'll handle uh, firm or soft. And Tom, one final question for Gossip Girl, as you've developed her, and she's just going so good right now. How does she take to her training, and how is she to be around? Uh, she's a pleasure to be around. She's uh, very well-mannered. Uh, uh, looks like she loves to train. Uh, she's just been uh, an ideal horse to be around. Well, Tom, I have to tell you, Mark and I in the audience appreciate your time welcoming back to the studio this morning, and wonderful job with criticism last week. Good luck this afternoon with Gossip Girl, and I hope we talk to you again for maybe both of them down the road. Okay. Thanks a lot, Mike. Uh, Mark, thanks, thank Tom. You. Tom Albertrani, thanks. ladies and gentlemen, and uh, he is on, on quite a roll. I'm pretty sure I'm accurate, 12 or 13. 12 or 13 stakes, stakes and having a this wonderful year. season. So. so thank you to Tom. Mm -hmm. All right. One week from today, and I will remind you, we will be on the air at the regular time next week of 10 o'clock. First post is 1135.